On this trip, I'm heading to the Powder River Breaks in southeast Montana to hunt mule deer. When it comes to backcountry venison, you do not get wilder than this. I hope we're good to those deer. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. It's about sustenance, survival. It's about connecting to the land. It's about the purity of the challenge. It's about life. In each and every one of us, there is a primal instinct to hunt and consume. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. It's mid-November in southeast Montana's Powder River Badlands, and nighttime lows are down below zero. I'm in search of a mule deer buck that'll yield a good load of meat with the distinct aftertaste of adventure. I lived in Montana for a decade, and I chased mule deer every fall. I know how to find bucks, but my familiarity with the animal has developed into a sort of connoisseurship. More than any species of big game, I dream about getting big, mature specimens the kind that are as good for decorating my walls as they are for decorating my freezer and fry pan. Whenever I hunt in Montana, I always go with my brother Matt. And this time, our good friend Matt Moison is joining us as well. And yes, that is a van full of llamas. In fact, Matt calls it his llama van. <laughs> man, that spit does smell, though, man. I think maybe I'd rather get kicked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they'll help us pack out whatever meat we're lucky enough to get. Also, they'll help us get our gear back into an area where few other hunters visit. We got an area doesn't get much pressure, if any at all. This area is super rugged and pristine thanks to smart land management decisions that have limited roads and vehicle access but we still need to hike as deep into the stink as possible. Llamas are more rugged and way more agile than a horse, and they're more suited for craggy terrain. But this is the Badlands. Even though we're only going a few miles, it takes all day to hike where we're going to set up camp. By the time we set up our campsite, it's already dark. It really feels like the kind of place where some old loner just doesn't get shot. I have never seen, like with a gun in my hand, the mule deer I'm after. It's not like I've seen him and he got away. I haven't even laid eyes on him. I and haven't I, either. I dropped the hammer, he's gonna be a frickin' I'm going for a whopper or, or not. Like personal best. Yeah. The issue you got now to think about is they're talking about all this nasty weather. Like if it does get stormy and blowy and drops down to six degrees or four degrees or whatever they're talking about. Are you thinking like, awesome, deer are gonna be moving? I think if it gets windy, we're gonna see fewer deer. Yeah. If it starts to snow and it influences our visibility, we're gonna see fewer deer. But then you got fresh snow and you know what's going on. I just don't like being cold, so I kind of hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> there's there's more of a chance of me getting a deer if it just stays like this, because then I'll be out hard. there. Yeah. You know, it becomes a point with cold where after, at a while it just becomes like difficult to like function and, and to maintain, maintain motivation. concentration. Yeah. yeah. Well, for tomorrow, let's think about how we're gonna divide up this area. I like the idea of me going this way. If somebody else wants to do that, I'll be mad at them. OK. You want him mad at you? I can't take your anger, Matt. <laughs> I'll go further up the ridge, man. We check out the map and plan tomorrow's hunts. We pick three routes so that everyone is going into good country. Yeah, it sounds good, man. All right. During the night, we got dumped on by a little more snow. But the main thing is it got way cold. This morning, it's just bitter. But we wish each other luck and head out on our separate hunts. We'll leave the llamas behind to do their preferred activities, standing around and eating. Hopefully, later, I'll need one to carry out a big pile of buck meat. My 
My plan is to hike up on a big knife edge ridge that runs east-west behind our camp. From there, I'll move slowly down the ridge while glassing the valleys below. It's fresh snow. It's blocking the air a little bit, but you can see deer on that white real good. Smaller deer, both traveling like that. I'll tell you something that's bugging me. Every set of tracks I've seen have all been moving down valley. Is it coincidence? Or are they somehow pushing out of these hills? I just have to think it's coincidence, but it's driving me nuts. I just can't picture this snow moving deer. Like moving them distances, you know, it's just not that bad. Judging by tracks, it looks like this ridgeline is the nexus of deer activity, but I haven't seen one. It's a huge buck. Oh, man. I got a big, big buck down here. But it's got a doe right underneath him. steps, I'd be able to shoot. There she goes. I've got my crosshairs on a buck, but a doe's in my way. I don't want to risk hitting both the deer so I need to wait until I have a clear shot. made a giant U shape and ended up coming back my way. But this time, they're on the opposite side of the canyon. I got two does now. It's a nice big four by four buck. And they're just up there feeding. This could still happen. I don't like that distance though. I would like to get where if I saw them, I'd have a reasonable chance of putting a stalk on them. Right now, there they are. Way too far away. The morning has passed and the wind's picking up. 
I watch the buck drift into a thicket of ponderosa pine and vanish. I know that buck is bedded somewhere in there. Imagine it like, you know, here's a ridge. Those deer are somewhere in here, maybe. I'm down here. I probably should go like this to get up wind of them. hasn't come through. My guess is he's still bedded down. I'm gonna run out of daylight. See if I can find where that big buck's bedded down. I got a good strong wind. I don't gotta worry about him smelling me. So my plan is to back away from the ridge, move down and pop back up again, then back away, move down and pop back up again, and repeat that until I find where the buck is at. Stalking up this ridge toward a damn fine mule. If my instincts are right, he's gonna be bedded just on the opposite side of the ridge line. I spent all day getting in the perfect spot, and now I ended up spooking a beautiful mule deer. Unbelievable, man. Right in his bed, right like I was saying, all day long. I'm gonna sneak up here. The wind's gonna be coming like this. I'm gonna peek over, I'm gonna find him in his bed. He's in his bed, and he just goes, and just boom. Oh, he didn't give me the old mule deer relook. Now my fork, he's gone too. It's like fine, I'm owning up to it. I'm being a total baby right now. Am I gonna quit hunting? No. Do I know why I go hunting? Yes. That ain't gonna happen again. I've hunted more mule deer and killed more mule deer than any other animal. This is I like mule deer, man. I like eating mule deer, I like looking at mule deer, I like stalking mule deer. And as a end note, like a book note or a buck note to my years of doing that, I'd like to have one nice big old muley. Still, I'm going to quit hunting. I don't know why I go hunting. I'd like to say, you know, oh, we'll get him tomorrow. We ain't getting him tomorrow. In the morning, the weather's completely different all over again. Now there's a kind of weird, misty sort of fog hanging in the air, and it's cold, cold. It's just not ideal hunting weather. But with the cold, I know that deer are probably going to be moving late into the morning. There's a little bit of breeze, and it's flowing down valley. I 
I've been thinking since last night. I wanted that big buck bad. I mean, that buck was a cool looking buck. I would have loved to have gotten it. But now, with the weather being like this, I'm changing my strategy and I'm changing my goals. I had my chance at a good buck, and now I'm not in the position to turn down a small buck. I want mule deer meat, and I'm out here hunting mule deer. If I can find a branch antlered buck, I'm gonna go after him. Now, I'm in harvest mode. Multiple deer moving through here. They're feeding under these trees where it's sheltering. There he is. I've got a small buck and a doe out in front of me. They're moving away from me, but everything else is in my favor. I'm downwind, the deer headed toward open ground, and the snow and fog makes me nearly invisible. The time is now. Gotta take what you can get. I got super lucky. Some good eating for some cold weather, man. I'm gonna stay here a minute. Just keep watching, make sure he's dead. But he doesn't budge. Yeah, I got a good mark on him. Instead of climbing up there twice, I'm gonna go back to camp, grab the llama, load the meat, and now they'll take a different route back. It's easier. I gotta hurry. In this frigid kind of weather, this deer can freeze, and there's nothing more tough to skin than a deer that's been frozen and thawed back out again. You want to skin them warm. Hey, Angel, come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Come. Badge. Come. I've got my mule deer down, and I've got a llama to pack out the meat. Now I need to get this thing broken down before it freezes solid. During the rut, like right now, you gotta be really careful about these metatarsal glands back here. There's one on each side, you just wanna get rid of them. A lot of people talk about gamey meat, like a ruddy buck. A lot of times they're getting that gland material on their knife and on their hands and then they're handling the meat it's just surface contamination that stuff gets on everything which is good to get rid of that <laughs> you know people uh know this from the star wars movie but when you're hunting like this and your hands get cold and slip your hand between the stomach and the abdominal lining it's just you know they run hotter than we do Oh, it's so nice and warm. Where the loin ends at this hip bone here, real sharp hip bone. And behind that, there's this pocket of meat. And it's just like got a great grain to cut up in like one inch cubes for stew. So I'm gonna take that, make camp stew. This is fresh meat, so it won't be real tender yet. So we can cook that for a while over the fire. And it'll start to break down and it'll be good eating. I pack up the llama and head back to camp. I'm starving. I got back in time. I beat those guys in, which is cool. Cause I'm gonna make up some food. I'm just taking those rump pieces off that deer. The meat's gonna take a while to tenderize. First thing I wanna do is cut my little cubes up, little cubes of meat like that big rump meat. Normally I'd brown these cubes of meat in oil, but I don't have any oil. So what I'm gonna do is start piling in snow and it'll melt and slowly simmer the meat and break it down. 
I don't have anything with me. I got some root vegetables, an onion, meat. It's still gonna be good. I'm just gonna simmer the whole thing together. It'll eventually make kind of a gravy. Salt, little hot pepper stuff. It's like gonna be great camp meal for being out this cold. Like out hunting, you get some deer meat. It just doesn't matter what you do with it. It's gonna be good. That's like simpler the better. I always figure if the recipe seems like remotely caveman-ish, probably doing something right. Is that a heavy pack? It's a heavy pack. It is? Nice, dude. I came over that ridge and I was like, oh, they're back at camp. I could totally smell the smoke. It was a welcome aroma. <laughs> What's going on in that pot? Making some uh, little buck meat stew. Fantastic. I shot a little three by three. We're coming out heavy. That's that's great. In the end, I did not get the big buck of my dreams, which is nothing surprising, since I've been hunting mule deer out here for well over a decade and I never have. But I often ask myself, if I did get the big buck of my dreams, then what would I be dreaming about? <laughs>